Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is um, April 28th of 2021. I, uh, let me adjust this microphone. I'm not sure it matters here. Let's see. Um, I just uploaded a video 49 minutes ago to YouTube. It's uh, titled, Set Up My Chromebox, uh, Trying Out Video and Audio. That's over here. I've got a monitor now over here that is hooked up to my Chrome box and it has 16 gigabytes of memory. And what I'm thinking, and you can do uh, Linux apps on it. What I'm going to look at is, and I'll probably mess everything up, I would like to format that and just have Linux on it. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll continue with that project or not. Um, but anyway, so I have that running. And I... Uh, so... Now here I have my two monitors. I haven't changed that since a day or two ago. And... Uh, this monitor here... Uh, is what you're seeing and then this monitor over here is where I'm actually running uh, Manicam they just added a uh, they just upgraded I haven't I don't see what the upgrade is that they've done yet uh, because I just a few minutes ago went ahead and did the little upgrade so over here I'm looking at my Manicam control panel and by having two monitors like this, it's, I see exactly what uh, you see over here um, on this monitor and you know what I'm sending out to you. And over here I have the controls and it, uh, I can watch my audio to make sure something doesn't happen to it and I can make some adjustments over here. So, um, anyway, the, uh, you're probably going to hear, instead of the aquarium pump going on my 20 gallon tank, you're probably just going to hear the bubbles because I just, oh, 10 minutes ago or so, this is the pump that I was using over there and as you can see it's big and it has four outlets on it has an adjustment and makes quite a bit of noise uh, when it's running so I've I've made some videos with it running because I forgot that it was running and I've been going over and trying to you know trying to remember to uh, turn this down and, you know, off temporarily. And then sometimes when I do that, I forget to turn it back up for a while. So this is, uh, let's see. This is, uh, this is this pump, $20 for it. It put out a lot of air, you know, run the filters and that I have in the tank. And, uh, this is the one I just got a few minutes ago, so about half the price. And the advertising point for this one here, you can see how small it is because this is the box. Well, I'll just give you an idea here, you know. That's uh, much smaller. So, uh, But this one is the, the shape of silence, powerful, dependable airflow. And uh, it's called the Tetra Whis Whisper. And uh, it has sort of a uh, shell over the top of it. Now, uh, it's, it's gotten good reviews and good reviews about, uh, you know, how quiet it is. Now, when I plugged in, 
when I first plugged this, unplugged the other one and plugged this one in, the pump was a little bit noisy. But when I uh, plugged the air, you know, to run it to my things, this seemed to quiet down. And uh, all I hear is a bubbling, and I can live with that. Uh, if it's problem for you people, I can, uh, now nah, I think you're just going to have to live with it. <laughs> so, so, um, yesterday I went to my doctor, I hadn't actually been in the doctor's office for I don't know how long, uh, several months ago, I did one of those online things, uh, Oh, by the way, I guess you weren't seeing this. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, that's the bad part of... Uh, okay. I'll have to learn. Okay, this is... Let me go back here. I think you missed all this. This is the pump that I was running uh, with four air outlets. And a controller up here so you can adjust it and you've been hearing it it's it's made a lot of noise it, it's only 20 bucks and uh, of course one thing it says you know up to 120 gallon tank and it's just, this was just hooked up on a 20 gallon high tank and this is the pump that I just got um, about half the price and the selling point on this is you know that it's uh, quiet and as I just mentioned uh, it is now I have hearing some hearing problems and I have problems with certain frequencies that type of stuff uh, but all I really hear is the bubbling and that might be nice <laughs> for a change since this doesn't have a a twist off, you know, a thing where I turn, can turn it up and down easily like this one over here does, uh, I don't think I'm going to be un going over and actually physically unplugging it. And I have a little thing in the back with outlets on, you know, so I have one air outlet going out and going into a little strip with some things, and I'd have to go and so. I think we're just going to see if we can live with it. We have a monstrous uh, couch that we do not use. It was actually my ex-wife's couch. And uh, when she moved, she insisted on bringing it. It's really, uh, like I said, it's really, it's built like a tank. Uh, but we never we don't use it in there and it just blocks about half of the living room and makes it uh, difficult for me to get well for any of us to get through get around it because she has her computer desk in there and her computer and uh, my ex-wife and then there's this divan and there's not much room to get around it and there's a, a bookshelf over in one corner which i can't even get in to put crap on to get stuff out of the way and and over there is where the uh, internet comes in and I've got a uh, device that actually I've mentioned this before that I I thought I mentioned that I had uh, two and I wanted to get a third one in and then I was mentioning it at my grown son or whatever and he says you you did buy a third one and it's in his room so so the internet comes in 400 megs down and 20 up and then it runs into this I wonder if I could yeah the hell with it I wonder what they call those I got it off of Amazon let me see if I can do a now nah, to hell with it. Um, let me uh, go 
it back here. Well, it almost shows. Um, so when we come up from the internet, you know, comes in from Charter or what do they call now? I forget. I should remember. I pay them every month. It goes into this little white thing. And from there, we can connect by Wi-Fi. But that we can also run out of there with one networking cable. And so in the living room, it doesn't run out into anything. But now I have one for my room identical, sitting right on the, I move it around occasionally. Right now it's sitting on the desk. And uh, I run out of it with a networking cable and I'm going into my PC, my B-Link PC with that. And let's see here what we're, um, what we're getting. Speed wise, let's see, speed. Okay. Now my son has one of these things in his room also, and he just goes, you know, so before that he was just having to use, he was getting Wi-Fi. And, uh, uh, now he, you know, he gets this type of, uh, speed. You know, right now my son's using his computer. My ex-wife's using her computer. I'm using my two computers. And, uh, she has her television on, uh, Netflix or CBS Live or something, 24 hours, you know, 24 seven. So, um, now the Chrome here is, um, I'm not running a network cable and it, it's Wi-Fi, I'm getting it Wi-Fi, so. Speed test, speedtest.net. Okay. And that is doing really well. Um, I mean, you know, for doing it Wi-Fi, uh, got 104 down and like I said, I'm paying for 400 and, uh, getting, uh, 22 up my daughter, Hillary has, I think one gig down. I forget what she's paying. I'm paying, uh, I should have a bill here. Um, am I paying a hundred a month? Let's see, wait a minute. Yeah, I think I am. I'm, and we don't get any, we're just getting, oh, internet. And then the ex-wife gets, uh, she has a cell, or a, not a cell phone, but a uh, one phone line from those people. Uh, so that's a hundred a month. My uh, daughter and her grown son, uh, they're getting one gig down and I forget how much up. I'm not sure if it's 40 up or more. So, uh, Anyway, I like the, uh, I've got, you know, this is a Brio camera, Logitech Brio on a tripod. Uh, and then over here, I'm using the uh, Logitech C920E. Uh, I've got a couple more uh, USB 
cameras laying around someplace. And then I've also got the software for the uh, uh, and the hardware, so that I could I can also hook up my uh, Logitech digital camera, the uh, Logitech uh, G7, so I can hook that up. But actually, the uh, Logitech USBs for what I'm doing. By the way, for, uh, for here, I'm using this. I love this, except this is a, this is for the, well, I've got hooked up to the uh, Chrome box, the DOS keyboard. The thing is heavy. And I, it, the only thing that's not lighted is the keyboard's not lighted. Now I'm not into gaming. And I don't need a keyboard that's flashing different, you know. But I like to be able to see, you know, I can, I'm in a, I, uh, what do you call it? I can type in high school. I was, I didn't, in high school we had, I went to the South Military Academy, a uh, Christian Brothers school and we were military all the time, no females, that was a mistake. A high school boy should not go to a uh, school with no girls. Uh, but, uh, oh, so they had like four classes for each, you know, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. Uh, and of course, they picked, they did, I mean, in order to get in, you had to take a test. And they assigned you. Now, there was people there that had, there was people, some parents who sent their kid. Usually, if you, you know, you're a Catholic family. And if you, if you have some money, you'd send them to uh, a Jesuit high school, Catholic high school. And then there was also a Jesuit college there, you know. Um, now, some people who had money uh, sent their boys to De La Salle Military Academy, especially if there was a problem with uh, discipline or something like that. But then they, uh, in order to get in, you know, you had to take a test. And uh, so I ended up in, they had two classes for dummies, you know, two homerooms. And then there was two homerooms for the smart kids. And, uh, you know, the smart kids got uh, calculus and trigonometry and Latin and Greek and uh, I don't know what all. And the homeroom I was in and the other homeroom, we got typing and uh, you know, general math, or well, we actually got algebra. Wow, you know. Uh, but I mean, I was exactly where I belonged in the class. But at the end of the year, uh, the school would send, you know, the, a class to someplace so that you could see what it was like to be out, you know, just one day, I think. Well, at least one day for, uh, and they went to uh, the smart kids. They went to, uh, I forget, they went through a number of different names. It was a play, Bendix and Western, I forget, not Western Electric. Well, they probably went to Western Electric too, because that was out in Lee Summit at, uh, well, uh, but, you know, those those kids went to, you know, high tech stuff. Of course, it wasn't the kind of high tech stuff you have, but uh, my class, we went to uh, a cleaners uh, drive in criterion or something, rather. The radio commercial or TV commercial, whatever the woman says, I won't be able to do it. 
drive-in <gasps> criterion or something like that. And then when we were there, the owner or manager or whatever said, you know our thing. Well, somebody goosed the lady when, you know, when she made it and they, we kept that as a, so <laughs> we went to a, now in the uh, junior year, I don't know if they still do that or not. So some of you young whippersnappers, and that's mainly who are my viewers are. It's kind of surprising, you know, YouTube uh, gives you a whole bunch of data about your videos and uh, who the uh, who's watching and the hours are watching and all that type of stuff. So it's uh, um, you can let's see where is that date? I looked for it before and I couldn't. Uh, I found it eventually. Content and analysis, maybe that's it. Yeah, or be like reach or whatever. So where is it? Traffic source, playlist. Well, I didn't want to go through that anyway. Uh, but um, mostly I get viewers during the daytime, you know, North America, which makes sense. And uh, the, uh, the breakdown is mostly young people and almost zero, you know, maybe 1% female viewers or something. Um, but uh, back to high school. Oh, anyway, back to, I think I mentioned this. I went to the doctor and I had a lump. I don't know if it's going to show up or not but I have a lump right here and it um, it hurts if I pick okay that doesn't do it but minor but like a 24 pack of coke or a, a 12 pack of coke or something like that it hurts so oh anyway when I went to have you know, to see the doctor for my regular checkup, but I've been, I just kind of skipped a regular checkup going there and I did a one online a while back because I knew that the, they didn't want to go a year or so without me. Uh, I, by the way, I've had both my virus shots and I should be, I'm one of those people that I'm done with that unless you have to have another one in six months or something, you know. But, uh, when I went this time, they were, uh, I actually don't see a doctor. I see, I, I think it's classified as nurse practitioner or maybe, I forget what it is. I can't remember. Uh, I, I switched from the doctor there oh, a few years ago. Uh, I didn't really care for him that much and switched to this nurse practitioner or whatever she's called. But, uh, you know, she can do everything. I mean, well, there might, there's something she might call on the doctor and say, you know, hey, what about this? But so when I went this time, they asked, uh, we have a nurse practitioner in training. I'm not sure if they said nurse practitioner, you know, is it okay if she comes in with Sarah? And I said, sure. And so she came in and then uh, went through everything and I'm 80 years old. I've never had such a thorough examination. And part of it was she went out to, she says, okay, I've done this and I'll go out and get Sarah now and have, and she went and then she came back and said, well, Sarah's busy with the patient. And then she went ahead and did some more. So uh, she took off both my shoes and socks and uh, looked at my feet and my legs and uh, did the thing with a little sharp thing to see if I could actually feel anything in my toes and my feet. Um, she just 
did a thorough, you know, exam in every way. And so when I got done, you know, the one Sarah did come in, real nice lady. Uh, when I came from Miami, what was that, 15 years ago, 20 years ago? Can't remember. Uh, uh, and I, you know, I had to change insurance, you know, so I picked out a female doctor because I had a female doctor one time and I only saw her, I forget if she was in Orlando or if it was Miami, I think it was in Orlando and I went there and I signed up and I went for the first time you get signed up, you know, you, you go and she did a fantastic thorough exam. And so after that, I did, and I, when I came, but then I left right away. She, she did an exam and then uh, I left with uh, my uh, grandson and we came to Texas. And then when I got here, I picked out a female doctor from the uh, insurance list. And then when I called to, uh, uh, you know, make the initial appointment so, so they can, you know, they can't get to know you because they, they have somebody, but you know, so they would have something. And they said, oh no, she's practicing at a hospital now. She doesn't do, so I ended up picking out this uh, doctor's office that I go to. And so I had the uh, the main doctor. I think he may be the only MD actually there, but he has several assist, you know, nurse practitioners or whatever they're called. Uh, but they, he, he had this female, Sarah, Sarah uh, whatever her name is, and uh, she's really nice and she's really thorough, but this, this trainee, a female. So now I've, you know, they checked this, you know, uh, the, and uh, my other things, and now uh, I'm, they're going to set me up with a uh, proctologist, a foot doctor. I think I got that right for my feet. And I guess maybe the leg, lower leg, well, the feet part, you know. And then, of course, they want me to go back to the eye doctor, which when you have diabetes, you need to go uh, once a year. And I went to the, I mentioned that, I think, before that I, back several years ago, they referred me to an eye doctor. And I, I don't, he didn't like me. I don't know why. I, I never, you know, I was like, why? Well, even now, I think, why did that guy not like me? You know? Uh, and I was set up to go, well, I should have been, you know, I was diagnosed with my prostate and bladder problems and all that kind of stuff and sent to, uh, well, I wasn't sent. I picked out a urologist in uh, when I started having that trouble, I went to a regular doctor and the doctor did, uh, you know, the blood work that they do for your prostate to see if they elevated such and such and that may be cancer. And then I also ended up going to this, well, anyway, I picked one out that was close by. That was a mistake. The worst doctor I have, well, I can't, well, the worst doctor I've personally had as a doctor was, uh, now the doctor that I saw, the you know, he said, "Well, you need a urologist." And then so I picked, you know, he said, "You want me to pick?" And I said, "No, I'll pick one." I picked one that was close. And uh, man, I should have punched his lights out. Uh, I'll do a fast thing. Anyway, the doctor that I saw says, you know, okay, you've got prostate problems. You need to see a, you know, urologist. And he says, uh, here's a couple prescriptions. And he gave those to me. Anyway, I was starting, I've been having problems for a while and it, it just got so bad that I actually had to go to a doctor, you know, the uh, urinary problems and that type of stuff. And, um, uh, so I called for, you know, make an appointment with the urologist. And I think they said it'd be three months before I could get in. 
maybe it was two months. It was a long time. So I called and made an I think it was three months. I called and made an appointment. And then, of course, I was taking the medication that this doctor, you know, gave me. And I started, I was getting, I was getting better with my problem, with my, you know, prostate problem. It was shrinking whatever it does, you know, shrinking it or whatever. So the urine, you know, <laughs> so the urine can get through, get by, you know, because the prostate swells up and, you know, you're, urinary tract or whatever that goes through or whatever goes through there is getting you know. so I was, it was getting better you know better I still knew I needed to see it you know but it's getting better so then I got a call that the uh, urologist could uh, see me instead of you know a month early so so I go over and now he doesn't that's fine if it you know I go in, and he doesn't listen to my heart. He doesn't take my blood pressure. He just has me sitting down in front of his desk, and then he he says, uh, "Okay, let me see here. You're taking such and such and such and such. Why in the hell are you taking that? What doctor told you to take that?" And I was now normally you'd be having like a referral or whatever. I didn't want to get him yelling at my, at the other doctor, you know, whatever. So I said, no, well, I saw a doctor and he told me that, you know, that I had prostate problems and that I needed to see a specialist, you, a, you know, a, a urologist. And so I'm here, you know, to, uh, you know, so he, but he still was like, he still yelled for a while, kept on. He shouldn't tell you to take that. He shouldn't, you know, okay, you know. So, uh, he says, okay, so, so you want to take this medicine, you know, and I, and I said, well, you're the specialist, I, you're the urologist, I'm, you know, I've come to see you, you're the specialist, and he says, do you want to take it or not, and I said, well, I'm better, you know, so I was like, I'm better, I was really, you know, bad, for a while it was it looked bad it, you know felt bad i was in you know whatever and so he was just like so you want to take it huh you want to take that medicine that he gave you and i said well you're the you know he says uh, you know i said whatever you tell me to do i'm going to do and he says okay stop taking it i said okay i won't take it anymore he says okay well it'll be i forget i'm going to have you have a CAT scan, no, not a CAT scan, anyway, a test, done at the hospital. He said, but they can't get you in for uh, a month and a half or two months or something. And I was like, well, okay, uh, you know, this medicine, so you want to take that medicine? <laughs> so. I said, no, whatever you're telling me to do. He says, okay, you know. So, I was working, by the way, CompUSA. So, I'm not taking the medicine. And then I start, you know, the, the things, in, you know, the, the problems is coming back because I'm not taking this medicine. It's coming back. And it got to the point and I tried calling. Then, I, when it, as I could see, it was getting worse. I tried calling this urologist, and I called. You know, I didn't want to bother him. You know, and I called like at uh, nine in the morning. I called the office, and I wasn't expecting him to answer. I called at nine in the morning, and a man answers, and I said, uh, "Could I speak to Doctor So and So?" You know whatever. This is Dr. I said, oh, sorry, doctor. I didn't think you'd be answering the phone yourself. And uh, he said, I forget what he, you know, it was like, I told you that you'd have to have, you know, such an, and I said, well, I'm having difficulty. So do you want to take the medicine that you, so he remembered that part. Do you want to take that medicine? And I said, well, I'm hurting. I'm hurting bad, I, uh, you know, and I think at that point I had 
pissed the floor at CompUSA. I went into CompUSA when they, and he opened in the, you know, the morning to, to work, and I pissed the floor there, and I went over and told the general manager, I said, I, I'm going to have to quit. And I, you know, I quit. And so, so anyway, <clears throat> he's yelling at me and uh, on the phone. And uh, so then, okay, there was a, what was the reason for there was, okay, it must, okay, that was, okay, that, I didn't call, when I called, when I called the doctor's office before I got him, I called and uh, I forget what time I called and they said, oh no, no, I called in the morning. He does his surgeries, he does his, he's not in here at that time. So I called, you know, uh, another time later, you know, hours later, you know, on another day, you know, and it was, oh no, he does such and, you know, and then I, somehow that's when I got him at nine o'clock and he must have been, I don't do it, a procedure, I don't know. So, but anyway, so then he, I said, well, I better start taking the uh, medicine. So, um, but okay, at, by that time when I quit, and, I, and then I quit, CompUSA. I was in every 30 minutes, you know, I would urinate a small amount is all that would come out. I'd stand there, stand there, stand there, no more is going to come out. And then uh, 30 minutes later, and we're talking extreme pain, I mean extreme pain, tears in my eyes, you know. And then I would urinate a little bit and the pain would go away for 30 minutes. And that's what I was, you know, that was what I was up against. And it's a good thing that I had the pain because if I hadn't have had the pain, I would have gone over and you'd have been reading on the new, I'm not a violent person. I've never been a violent person. I would have done because uh, I can't, there was another thing he yelled at, he carried on about Anyway, so then it, I luckily, I don't think he had anything to do with it. Luckily, the hospital called. Well, yeah, the hospital called and said, okay, we, we'll set you up for tomorrow or something or other to come in to have this thing done. And now I must have gone over and they checked in or something with them because I had a, a thing to measure, you know, urine and I, okay, for 24 hours, I peed and wrote down every 30 minutes how much, you know, how much I'd urinated in this container. So then I go over to the hospital and I knew this wasn't good. I'd never had a catheter put in me before, but two real nice ladies and I, they had, when I went in, I had the paperwork, you know, that showed how often I had urinated. And they, they had a, like a platform, like sort of like a uh, lifeguard would, you know, be watching out over the water or something like that. <laughs> they had this platform that I had to go up and sit on this thing up there. And I knew what, you know, and uh, they said, okay, well, have you, uh, and I said, well, yeah, here I've got all the numbers and and they said is your bladder empty I said oh yeah it's it's empty because I went as much as I could and then so I'm up there they have a TV up in the corner which I knew was you know the way it was located and everything okay this is not going to be good this is a setup I knew it and then they hand me the remote control for the TV you know that's so I couldn't punch them or something, you know, that's, I guess that's just, they figured out this, which is, thank goodness, they have a way thing for, for them, you know. So they gave me the remote control and I thought, okay, okay. And then they uh, put the catheter in, first time I've been catheterized. And it hurt, I knew it hurt because I spent 30 years hospital security and I don't know how many times the nursing service would call in the emergency room or whatever, Jim, I, 
you're gonna need to you're gonna need to hold this guy down and it was people that were like unconscious and I'd say I don't think so. I don't need to hold you know yeah you do and they come up off you know so they put the catheter in and then and then they uh, said so your bladder was empty right and I said yeah and they held it up it was filled you know so uh, then I went back to see the doctor that doctor and I don't think he yelled at me when I went back for him to do then the to check to take biopsies I think he has a, like a gun that he goes in through your rectum and it goes pop 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 taking like 10 or 20 I forget how many I think it was like 10 at most at, at, at least samples and at that point when he was when I when he was doing that you know actually it didn't hurt it didn't hurt that much but the the popping thing was kind of uh, but anyway he was such an asshole that I thought you know I wonder if he's injecting uh, some cancerous tissue in there I mean I that's how that's how much I disliked this guy and how much I had actually no uh, he's the only doctor I ever when I got done with him anyway he the results came back negative no cancer and uh, I logged into a site and uh, It didn't do any good. I bet I logged into a site where you rate your, rate a doctor, and I rated him. Yeah, you can imagine. Two, another thing. It was a little thing, but you know, I, I when I went to see him, where I had was having this trouble. I mean, at the point when I was having the, it was bad, and I went over to see him, and I go in and for my appointment and they said okay it's, I forget what it was fifty dollars or a hundred dollars or whatever it was for his fee you know for the insurance you know took care of the rest and so I took my bank card oh no we don't you know yeah you have to pay by I think it was by check or cash or something and remember I was in you know in in pain big time so I had to it was hot it was Florida so it was hot I went there it was an early appointment but it was still working out so I had to walk several blocks away to a uh, ATM machine and get cash out and then go back and pay them so anyway then you know my oh by the way by the, I, this is an important thing he put me on the two medicines that the other doctor had put me on he put me on the two medicines that he was yelling at me about why did that doctor prescribe you what did he do he shouldn't be prescribing you know I guess he thinks that, that his specialty or something or other. by the way I spent 30 years working hospital security great nurses and mostly great doctors ER doctors were you know mostly great I can't think of yeah I really you know uh, but the specialists that I ran into urologist number one assholes uh, some surgeons uh, who else and as an example I remember working hospital security that's before I had this trouble with you know this before I left Kansas City working hospital security and a patient comes into the ER at 3 o'clock in the morning they have doctors on call if you're a small hospital or even a big hospital unless you're a trauma center a lot of doctors are out there you know there's they're not if you're a trauma center then they have all the doctors and nurses everybody you need you know 
but if you're not and they have to call somebody in so there's always a doctor on call like there's a minister you know they take turns you know you look at the call sheet and oh for okay you got the catholic priest on call he he'll be busy he won't want to come in you have a uh, you know, the Baptist or whatever, oh, they love to, you know, whoever's on call, you know, because they have people, you know, and whatever, but, so, and some of the, the ER nurses would have to call, like when there was a surgery going to be done, you know, at the middle of the night, the ER nurse would have to call, you know, the doctor who was on call, the, uh, you know, uh, orthopedic doctor for broken bones or whatever it was would have to call, and then they have to call the anesthesiologist. Okay, some of them were uh, kind of assholes because it was the nurse would have to call them, and then the anesthesiologist would say, Well, is Dr. Is Dr. Carroll there now? Well, no, doctor, we just, we call Dr. Carroll and he's coming in and now we're calling you. And it would be like, I mean, the, 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 the uh, anesthesiologist would be, now if they work during the daytime at, you know, their big hospital or whatever, but for, that was like, well, they want to be maybe called when the doctor already, you know, when the uh, surgeon already got there or something, it was like, you know, Sort of like a pharmacist, you know. A lot of pharmacists, well, no, just a few that I've run into. A lot of pharmacists was, well, I went to school, you know, just as long as a doctor did. Well, I don't think they did all this, you know, but, you know, like, whatever. They had, probably have a point, you know. And they're not making as much money and they're not getting maybe as much respect as they think they should and all that kind of stuff. But well, anyway, so they, they're calling this uh, urologist or well, a patient comes in and the nurse tries to uh, put a catheter in him. Can't get it in. Ouch tries two or three times and then the nurse says I I can't get it doctor and then the doctor was uh, I don't want to do it and she says you got to do you know so he goes over and he tries so then they look on the sheet oh shit they see the urologist who's on call oh crap okay so they call him and he comes in and he is pissed and he yells at the ER doctor and and then he go of course he goes in and he just goes just like that it's you know he put it in just like that and the patient wasn't you know like me screaming when i had it done when i had a had a catheter put in me a couple of times recently uh so then he arrogantly you know leaves and then he calls in on the phone and the nurse gives me the phone dr so-and-so left and he he left his favorite stethoscope on top of his car and it fell off and so i went out walked outside where he was parked i walked the entire driveway you know out to the outer belt road I walked up the outer belt road and then I knew he was going, you know, he's going to then take that ramp going to uh, northbound 71 highway and I walked that ramp up to the highway or down to the highway looking for his stethoscope and then I went back and then the, he wanted to be called and the nurse called him back and said, sorry. The security guard couldn't find you, you know, couldn't find your stethoscope. So then he came back, not at night, but he came back, I, I heard, you know, uh, a day or two later that uh, he found it right on that outer belt on the uh, ramp or someplace down there. He, he found it. So, but I did look for it, you know. 
and I didn't look for it any less, you know, or any more. I just looked at it the normal, whatever, you know, whatever. But, so anyway, uh, oh, when I was at the hospital with my infected leg for six days, uh, the numbers or stuff for urine output, that kind of stuff, they catheterized me. The first time they catheterized me, they, the nurse, she was a nice nurse. She hit the prostate and it bled for like 24 hours. And then she took the catheter out and they put another catheter in. And uh, so anyway, that six days was, I think I've talked about that a little bit from a leg infection. Because uh, my legs and feet don't get good circulation. But uh, they, I was supposed to leave like the next next day or whatever. I've been there six days. And uh, there were some things I, went, I wasn't happy with about, but anyway, so, uh, and now the first urologist that came through, that came through, I was there for uh, my leg, but you know, the lab numbers and that kind of crap come back. He just came, I didn't, he didn't, I didn't even know he was a urologist, you know, he just, he didn't look at, I think he might, maybe he looked at my chart, I guess he did. And then he left. And then it, the, for my, the, for my sixth day, and I was supposed to go home in the morning, uh, this real nice guy comes in and he says, I'm, uh, you know, okay, you're, I'm urologist or whatever. And I said, uh, well, doctor, uh, I don't have a urologist. Uh, I was told years ago in Miami that I, I needed one, but I haven't had one. And uh, I said, where's your office? And he's, you know, it's like West Fort Worth, where I live, you know, I live. And I said, will you be my, uh, he says, yeah, he says, here's my card. And I said, okay, I'll call. And uh, then he left. No, then before he left, I had a catheter in me, remember, you know, this second one. because. So he says, okay, do you want to go home with the catheter or you want the catheter to come out now? And I said, I want the catheter to come out now. So he said, okay. And then he says, I'll tell him. And then he left and they came in and then they took the catheter out. As you can maybe tell, the catheter going in is like, 95% agonizing, unbelievable pain. Coming out, you know, it's 40%, uh, it's coming out, but 40% or something, you know. You're glad to get it out, but, so a little later the nurse comes in, well, your lab work shows that, I forget, you know. Uh, we're gonna need to put a, a catheter, we're gonna need to put a catheter in, you, you know. And I said, well, you know, she said, no, we're going to need to put one in. I said, nope. I said, uh, I'll just be leaving AMA. You know, I, of course, I had a discussion with, you know, the nurse. And then but the nurse even called my, this was in Fort Worth. The nurse even called my daughter in Maryland. And my, you know, to, and my daughter got on the phone. Dad, could you just stay? They said that, you know. That I, she said, I talked to them and they said you were going to be going home in the morning. And uh, whatever. And I said, no, I'm leaving AMA. Because uh, they insisted that they had to put one in. And so anyway, well, they didn't put one in. I went home. But when I went yesterday to this, exam or whatever I told you know I, I don't have a urologist and I need one and I said I can't find I lost the card you know and uh, actually I was in no no hurry to see a urologist because I I do not want to have a catheter put in me I don't want to have the rotor rooter job done either but maybe he could talk me into it as long as they're going to put it, if I have to have a catheter put in, no. 
but they knock me out and put a catheter in and then do whatever they need to do and then take the catheter out and then wake me up or maybe I don't know but uh, anyway I told him I well I said there was a neurologist that came through and I said that he, I wanted him as my and so uh, they looked on the computer and said Dr. So-and-so and I said yeah that's it that's it they could pull it up on because I guess he went and told the nurse, yeah, or, yeah, okay, he wants me, and then they put, they entered in the computer, so so they pulled it up, so I guess I'll be saying, but anyway, so anyway, foot doctor, uh, urologist, oh, I have to have a scan, they're going to set a scan time up, because whatever this is, may be a problem situation or it may not be but a scan I'll let them know whether I'm going to just live with it and have pain whenever I try to lift up some secret seven and have it or I don't actually drink you know but or else it's going to need uh, to be taken out and I'm not sure what else they would have to uh, you know do so I have to have that done and then it's time to see the uh, skin doctor uh, and it's time to see the eye doctor and I I, I think I mentioned the eye doctor did not like me and I don't know why so I said and if you're diabetic you need to have your eyes tested every year for sure and I it's been years since I had it done because the eye doctor was a prick I know I'm sounding like I'm not actually I'm too easygoing too passive and whatever but the eye doctor didn't like me and I didn't like him and I didn't like the clerk you know that at the desk so I told him they said well you need to have him because you do if you know a lot of diabetic people uh, have to have, I have two, by the way, uh, cataracts, one in each eye. Now, when I saw the eye doctor that I didn't like and he didn't like me, they were, they're back where they were, and I don't know, not in my, not affecting my vision yet. But if you're a diabetic, uh, blindness is, uh, if you don't take care of your eyes, you're going to go blind. And I worked at a hospital where we had a a, uh, a unit, actually a separate building, that had uh, blind people. And at that time, like the 70s, 1970s, not that far ago, a lot of those people, adults, were people who... Uh, they were blind and their parents just didn't get, I mean, they didn't, maybe there wasn't enough to, you know, they were uh, lacking in social skills and lacking in able to take care of themselves and, and everything else. And so maybe their parents passed away, you know, they, maybe they grew up parents passed away or something and so they ended up in this program to uh, try to help them get along with their lives now one guy didn't have diabetes he was a young guy very young uh, he suffered I guess from depression or didn't have a girlfriend or something so he took a gun and uh, decided to commit suicide and all they did was just blow the front of his face off you know including his eyes and uh, so I have to see oh a lot of a lot of uh, diabetics have to get injections in their eyes 
I think of every two or three months or something like that. Uh, I have a problem about eyes too. I mean, I have, about my eyes, I, I don't like. That may be part of it with that doctor that I, the eye doctor that I saw. When as soon as he started doing the thing, I mean, I didn't hit him or anything. I didn't knock his hand away. I, whatever. But when he goes to do something, whenever you know, I might have backed up a little bit because he said something like, "What's wrong with you?" You know. So maybe that was it. Maybe it was my fault. So I'm going to be a little bit busy with doctor's appointments and stuff. But I'm not going to. I don't have a car. I don't want to really be using uh, the bus. And I don't want to be using uh, Uber or Lyft because of the virus thing, even though I've, you know, I'm vaccinated. Let's see, flash flood watch for Tarrant County expires in 19 hours. It just popped up on my uh, Chrome box screen. So I've updated you on everything, and uh, now I will upload this to YouTube. And okay, this has worked out as the video this morning was uh, 10 minutes, and this one is one hour. So uh, please give thumbs up. Uh, please use, if you can, a link below, like jimhoward.me. And uh, if you're going to purchase something from Amazon, and uh, let me know if 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 the if the audio is okay for this, and if if the uh, bubbles are you know too distracting or something. Anyway, thank you very much for watching.